This week we're at Strand on the Green. Unlike the last episode when we were at the Tower of London and we were looking at monumental architecture, here we're looking at uh, more day-to-day -day humdrum structures associated with the people who lived up on the riverbank and how they were relating and working with the river down here. So what we have here are some earlier riverfront defences. Um, you can see on this side we've got at least two phases of stakes um, holding up vertical planking. <laughs> on this side we've got uh, stakes which have been uh, driven in to the foreshore at an angle with wattling behind which has then been replaced by a masonry uh, armouring. So this side of the river wall would have been a sloping up and this side would have been vertical. And I'm sitting here in what was originally a drain, which seems to mark a property boundary. On this side, they're making the river differences one way, and on this side, they're doing them in another fashion. I'm just cleaning up this little bit of wall over here, um, which we think is probably the earliest stretch of river wall that we've got surviving on this bit of foreshore. It's got chewed bricks in it, um, so possibly going back to the 17th century, maybe 16th century, and they're very different to what the what bricks are in the wall down there that we've been looking at. They're, they're much smaller, much thinner, and much uh, brighter colour. They're bright red. Now, as well as working on uh, this side of the river, we've also had a small team working over at the other side of the river, over in Kew. Now, Richmond Archaeological Society have been working there for about 15 years and they've uh, drawn a plan of a really amazing probably set of structures over there which might represent the remains of the crossing point between Kew and Strand on the Green and also right down at the bottom of the foreshore, a structure that hasn't actually come out of the water this week but has been planned in the past, uh, we've got a possible Saxon fish trap which we've taken some samples of wearing comedy waders. So what we're looking at here, what could have been possibly a, a landing stage or a river stair down, but what's very strange about it is it has vertical planking on the outside, which you don't have for a river stair or a jetty, you allow the water to pass through it. If you put something up there it's going to create pressure. So it's been planked for a specific purpose and it's either to hold something out or hold something in. Um, we're a bit flummoxed by this one, but possibly we're thinking it might be something to keep eels fresh in. Uh, if people catch eels, you have a little freshwater tank and they can sit in that until you're ready to take them out to, to uh, eat. Strand on the Green and we've had a group come down and we're looking at the wildlife of the river. So we started off by thinking about the history of the river and in the Victorian times the great stink and the river's demise and we, 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 we looked at how the river's changed and recovered and also what lives in the river now and thinking about how dynamic the river system is. It's really so exciting. Every time we come down we find different things, different species of fish migrating through the river. We, uh, we found a little um, juvenile eel which is actually probably about two, two and a half, three years old and it's uh, swum about 5,000 kilometres all the way from the Sargasso Sea where it's hatched as an egg, it gets carried by the Gulf Stream all the way uh, to the mouth of the estuary and in the springtime uh, we see lots of these in the river migrating up into new territory going into all the tributaries of the, of the Thames uh, and then where they'll live for a number of years before swimming back they become silver eels it's called and the, the females can be about a metre long and then they swim all the way back to the Sargasso where they release hundreds of thousands of eggs uh, and the whole cycle starts again. <laughs> well, 
Well, we've had a great week here at Strand on the Green. We've had lots of people down, between 15 and 30 every day, and a lot of interested local people have been coming down and showing us maps and photographs. So we're starting to get uh, more of an idea of what went on down here before these current buildings were in place. This is just the start of the process. We'll over the next few months be looking at our records and be doing more documentary and cartographic research uh, in order to start to get a full understanding of what was happening here. So hopefully we'll see you all down on the foreshore next time we're there.